Was it God who stepped in and so providentially crafted the cosmos for our benefit? The more we study the cosmos, the more the psalmist words ring true. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. For me to believe that all our life and our planets came from one big bang, I, I don't believe it. I believe, I believe there is a higher power out there. No, I do not believe that the universe has some sort of maker behind it. I believe the universe started with the Big Bang. I believe the Earth was designed for life because everything we see around us, everything we need to live, everything we need to survive and be happy is all around us. We don't, we don't want for anything, all our food, our air, everything to make us happy and to, for us to survive is here. So there had to be an originator of this. It couldn't just happen by, by chance. The evidence clearly reveals that God has created the universe and the solar system and specifically designed the earth for life. Yet many would rather trust and believe in the Big Bang rather than trust and believe in the God of the Bible. The simplest living cells require thousands of specialized proteins in order to function. A number of scientists have tried to calculate the probability of life arising by chance. Sir Fred Hoyle, a British mathematician, using a supercomputer and the assistance of graduate students, estimated only the origin of the proteins of an amoeba, 2,000 of them, arising by chance. He estimated that the probability that the proteins of an amoeba could arise by chance is one chance in 10 to the 40,000th power. A probability of one chance in 10 to the 40,000th power is absurdly small. To illustrate this, consider the probability of snatching a particular atom out of the entire universe is one chance in 10 to the 80th power. After making this calculation, British mathematician Sir Frederick Hoyle stated, the likelihood of the formation of life from inanimate matter is one to a number with 40,000 noughts after it. it is enough to bury Darwin and the whole theory of evolution. There was no primeval soup, neither on this planet nor any other. And if the beginnings of life were not random, they must therefore have been the product of purposeful intelligence. We can prove mathematically that evolution is, is just a joke. couldn't possibly happen. Richard Dawkins, for example, uh, one of the leading evolutionists in his book, uh, The Blind Watchmaker, he acknowledges that the nucleus of every cell, plant, animal, or human, has a database larger than the 30-volume set of the Encyclopedia Britannica.
All life, plants, animals, and man, are made up of cells. Each cell is a miniaturized city performing the complex functions required for life to exist. The cell membrane is self-repairing and consists of special proteins that monitor what is outside of the cell as well as select which molecules are allowed to enter. These proteins act as pumping stations, controlling the import of nutrients and the export of waste materials. Inside the cell, we find staggering complexity. For example, the endoplasmic reticulum is a transportation network with protein-producing factories called ribosomes. The ribosomes produce many types of specific proteins while the ER channels them to precise locations. The Golgi bodies transport proteins to the exterior membrane, while lysosomes act as digestive organs that break down and recycle larger molecules into particles the cell can use. The mitochondria are the power plants of the cell, producing the fuel that the cell consumes. The nucleus contains the data center, which governs cell activity. Inside the nucleus, we find the chromosomes, which contain the DNA molecule that functions as a library and contains all the coded information needed for life. Billions of instructions are coded on this error-detecting and error-correcting self-replicating molecule. Only if all of these structures were created simultaneously could a cell function. For example, to produce DNA, a cell requires more than 75 different types of proteins. Yet, these proteins are only produced at the direction of DNA. The only solution to this dilemma is creation. The odds of getting DNA making protein on a roll of the molecular dice is like the odds of getting a 13 on a pair of gaming dice. The potential is not there. The probability is just plain zero. Evolution teaches that bacteria were one of the first life forms to evolve from chemicals. Many bacteria propel themselves with a type of miniature motor called a flagellum. These extremely efficient reversible motors rotate up to 100,000 revolutions per minute. The bacterial motor is similar to an electric motor. It has a filament that acts as a propeller, a universal joint, a stator and a rotor, and a drive shaft with bushings. Each part of the motor must function, or the bacteria will die. Since bacteria can start, stop, and change direction and speeds, they must have sophisticated sensors, switches, and control mechanisms. All of this is highly miniaturized. Eight million of these motors would fit in the cross-sectional area of a human hair. While bacteria are small, they are not simple. 